Welcome, welcome, welcome back to the channel, man. Welcome. Listen, man, I'm going to go over this real quick, man. I keep getting a lot of questions on uh, concerning the PT Cruiser and it's overheating. Overheating, overheating, overheating. I've recorded video after video after video concerning the overheating PT Cruiser. But one thing I haven't talked about much is the, the electrical side of uh you know the cooling system namely the cooling fan so what i'm gonna do uh for all you that's having trouble diagnosing the cooling fan since that's one of the main reason why this pt cruiser overheats a lot i'm gonna go over there with you uh in this video when i come back all right welcome thanks for watching thanks for watching i'm back now the pt cruiser uh we're going to concentrate on the uh the 2006 through the 2010 model mainly because those are the newer pt cruiser and those are the ones that equip with a, a module that actually run them uh namely the tip them tip them stands for totally integrated power module so basically the car came out in 01 between 01 and 05 we utilized the regular fuse box and we housed the fan relay, low speed fan relay and a high speed fan relay inside that box. From 06 to 10, we did away with that fuse box and uh, utilized a module. It's a fuse box, but it's, it's another monster. It's basically a module. We call it totally integrated power module. Now, the, um, you still need a way to turn fans on and off. Now, we still utilize a high speed fan relay and a low speed fan relay, but for the most part, they are housed inside the module. It's not a physical relay. Never mind the relays you see on the the, the fan, the uh, actual fan, because again, we're talking about the 06 through the 10, and they utilize a wire harness on the fan module. These are not your low speed and high speed fan relays. These are simply switches, switch relays. They just, you know, convert low speed current to high speed current, and you know, operate your fan, operates the fan that way never these never go bad do not replace these thinking these gonna make your fan work okay all right let's go over this real quick real quick what you if you're trying to diagnose this fan let me give you the uh, scenario the fan is not working you turn the ac on fan don't work remember uh the fan comes on at 206 degrees the low speed fan should kick in and if your car your temperature is still rising and by the time it reached 219 degrees the high speed fans should kick in. Okay. Now the fans, like they go off at certain temperatures also. Now, if you're driving on the freeway and you reach 44 miles an hour, your fan going to cut off because there's really no need for the fan operation at that speed. Remember you have Ram air ramming into your radiator. So at that speed, the fan is not needed. So the fan will cut off. The computer will cut the fan off automatically. Now we're talking about diagnosis. All right. So what we're going to do is, uh, I'm trying to keep this video quick. What we're going to do is go to the connectors on the fan. Keep in mind, we're talking about a 06 through 10 PT Cruiser. And though that year fan going to come with a harness on the fan. So I don't have the actual fan with me, but I do have the harness. So what we're going to focus on is this big connector right here. This is where you're getting all your power feed to. This connector right here is actually bolted to the fan motors itself. And of course, these are switches, switch relays. They absolutely do nothing but switch current. You know, they're worthless to me. But anyway, they're attached to the harness, so I have to discuss it. Now, we are focusing on here. Your fan is not working. If you turn your, best way to check your fan is turn the AC on. If you turn the AC on, your fan is supposed to come on. The low speed fan is supposed to kick on. If that's not happening, what I want you to do, go to this connector, unplug it. Unplug it. So we, I got the connector right here. I've draw. I've written a, a diagram up here. I have the connector right here. What we want to focus on is this terminal right here. Terminal one. It is a 10 gauge wire, which means it's thicker than the other. Uh, you have two 10 gauge wires on this connector. One is the ground and one is the power feed. Naturally, they should be thicker. But we're going to focus in on terminal number one. That's your red and brown wire. On this connector what we want to do is take your test light connect it to ground and take the other end of your test light and probe this circuit circuit a16 that's the 10 gauge red wire with the brown tracer we're gonna put our test light right here it should light if it lights that tells you you got power feed going to your fan motor now if it doesn't light what you need to do 
something feeds it, uh, uh, apparently something feeds it. So if the feed circuit is not there, then you have other problems. So basically, if this is not hot, what you should do uh, inside of your tip -um, we use a 50 amp mega fuse. That is a uh, fuse number 15. So pull your cover off your tip -um, find fuse number 15 and see if it's blown. So I got this diagram right here. What you got is 15 amp fuse, uh, 50 amp mega fuse, and it feeds terminal number one. That has to be hot before your fan would run, low speed or high speed, it doesn't matter. Now, like I say, uh, inside this tip -um, we utilize the low speed fan relay and the high speed fan relay, but it's built inside of the tip -um. There's no physical relays that you can replace. It's built inside. So do not for one instant think you can simply replace this, your fan motors, and that be your problem. That be your only problem. I've seen these go bad. The relays inside of them shorts out and cause your fan not working. This is why I want to go over the diagnostic procedure because if you doesn't have, if you don't have power right here and you know it's fed from the tip of them at the 50 amp mega fuse, then you check the fuse. That's pretty, you know, straightforward. Now, where we get technical is uh, the low speed side and the high speed side. Uh, again, low, we go, let's talk about the uh, low speed side. Low speed fan relay It's going to terminal number two, which is your dark blue and light green wire. It's a 20 gauge wire, so it's a lot smaller than the other two. So we're going to focus on low speed because low speed is the first motor that should operate if you need any kind of fan operation. If you start to overheat, you reach 206 degree, the low speed fan motor is going to come on. All right. It's going to come on again, like I said earlier, if the temperature continue to rise, that's when a high speed fan will kick in at I think 219 degrees. But we're going to let's focus on the low speed fan relay. Now, we're still in testing mode. OK, because this is driven by a uh, ground duty cycle. What I want you to do is take your test light and put it your clip in on the positive side. Put that on the positive side and take your test light lead and probe right here on pin two. Now, turn your AC on so you can get the input. Let's talk about inputs for a second. You got inputs. The fan is actually controlled by the tip, -um, but it's based off inputs inside the PCM. All this stuff is bust to the tip. -um. You got PCM is looking at cooling temp sensor and it's looking at your AC clutch control, uh, your AC button. When you hit the AC button, um, that sends a signal to the tip -um to operate your fan. Now, the turbo models utilize a high speed, I mean, an AC high side pressure switch. That's on the liquid line. So that's a whole nother model. That's on your turbo car. But for the most part, you're going to get inputs from your PCM to your tip -um to command fan operation. All right. Now, back to this uh, low speed fan. Your test light is on, your clip in is on the positive side of the battery, and you want to take your test light and probe right here. Turn your AC on to command AC. With, with the command of AC, your low speed fan should operate. Now, what you do, take your test light and probe right here on pin two. It should light up. That is your ground feed from the tip of command and fan operation. So it should light up. If it doesn't light up, then you have a control issue. If it lights up and your fan still doesn't run, matter of fact, plug this back in. After you test it, after you verify it's, it's grounded, you're getting uh, that supply to it, plug it back in. If your fan still doesn't work, then that's a no-brainer. You know you got a fan motor issue because what does it take to, for any uh, electrical motor to operate is a uh, power supply and ground. Now, we already verified we had power supply on PM1, which is from the 50 amp mega fuse. Now, that ground side and PN2, which is uh, your low speed fan operation, that's your power and ground. So, your fan low speed should be operating. There's the same way you test uh, low speed is the same way you test high speed. But it doesn't really matter if low speed fan is burnt out. The low speed portion of your fan module itself is burnt out. There's no really need to test uh, high speed fan really because you need low speed. That's the first speed that operates when the fan operates low speed so you got to have low speed fan operation all 
All right. But if you have to and you want to to test uh, for the high speed fan side, you do it the same way. OK, now that is the way you diagnose uh, the cooling fan on the 06 through the 10 model. Again, because it is equipped with a harness on the fan. Now, the aftermarket world, they sell these fans and they doesn't they don't really include this on the fan. Advanced auto, auto zone, places like that. You may not get one of these. So you may have to go or you can order it that way with the harness. And I suggest you get a fan that comes with the harness because I mean these wires just like anything else. They could create high resistance and cause all kinds of hidden short that will confuse you. All right, so if you're going to replace your fan, get it with the harness. That's only on the 06 through 10 model. Get it with the harness. All right, let's recap what we talked about. We got to tip them. And yes, a tip them could be the cause of your cooling fan not working. That's the control side to the fan. So yes, do not let anybody tell you just because your fan is not working, it's automatically replaced the fan. No. It has to be diagnosed. It should be diagnosed. You don't really want to waste a lot of money uh, throwing parts at it. So that's the simplest way I can, uh, you know, tell you uh, do it yourself is how to diagnose this fan. Because what well, we do it a little different in the dealership. We have a uh, our scan tool will allow us to um, actuate the fan. So we go in and tell the computer, look, computer, actuate the low speed fan. That's what we do our testing. We verify power supply here and we uh, verify we get that ground input right here and that low speed fan should be working. So it's pretty simple at a dealership. That's why I always advise you to take your car to a dealership because they can probably diagnose it right the first time. They're not just going to bring your car in, your fan not working. Let's put a fan on it. No, we're going to diagnose it properly and quickly because we have the necessary tools to do that. But if you're a do it yourself you can easily do it with a test light. OK, by the way, I showed you earlier, verify you have power supply here and verify you getting that low speed uh, fan input from the tip them here. If you're getting both of these that low speed fan should kick in. Now, even with the fan operating or uh, doing that test and you plug it back in your fan work, this fan is weird, man. It was designed really strange because. A bad fan motor that pulls excessive draw off your system will cause your car to buck and stall. Let me give you an example. You turn your AC on. Naturally, the compressor going to come on. With that input, it's going to command fan operation to come on, the fan to come on. Now, as soon as that fan kick in and your car bucks down and start bogging down like it's coughing, that simply means your fan is pulling way too many amperage out of the system causing that, that drop. All right. And also a uh, liquid line, AC liquid line can cause that. So you got to be careful. I'm going to talk about uh, the PT Cruiser AC system in another video. But for now, it, that fan can go bad. In, I, don't, I don't like the word bad. That fan could short out in many different ways. One, it can completely go out, meaning it doesn't work at all. Even with the inputs right here, fan still not working. It can go out in that way and it can uh, pull too many amperage, too much draw out of the system and cause your car to buck. So like I say, if you bucking when you turn that AC on, chances are your fan is pulling too much, you know, out of the system causing that buck. All right. So this is only pertaining to the 06 through 10. Like I say, the 01 through the 05 model utilize a fuse box and the only connector on the fan is going to be this, this little connector, three way connector. And your high speed and your low speed fan relays are physical, physical relays inside the fuse box. So that diagnostic is a little bit the same, but not so much as the same. But the theory is the same. And I can go over uh, when I get a harness, I go over that the process to diagnose fan uh, on those years. But I'm talking about the 06 through 10 that utilize a tip them, tip them totally integrated power module. Yes, it's a fuse box, but it's also a module, meaning it's on the bus, meaning we can look inside of it via a scan tool and actuate things and turn things out. Man, it has a lot of control. It controls your lighting. It controls, you know, stuff like your horn. It has a lot of responsibility. So that thing can drive you crazy if you ain't careful, if you're not diagnosing it properly. But 
Let me go over this. These are not your high speed and low speed fan relays. Your high speed and low speed fan relays are built integrally inside of your tip them. You can't replace them. If they go bad, you have to replace the whole module. And then you will have to, of course, marry the module to your car. You know, do what they call um, recovery. Uh, you essentially marry the module to the car. You, we, what we do is take the VIN, put the VIN inside the tip of them, and that way the tip of them will know all the features of your car. All right, I wanted to keep this video short. So I keep getting a lot of questions on how to diagnose the fan, and that's pretty much the simplest explanation I can give you. Okay, um, we've got the tip of them, the inputs from the PCM, and the connector is where you do mostly your diagnosis, which is right here. Power right there and the ground on uh, ground power right there on pin two, fan should operate. If not, if you have those two and your fan is not blowing, you need a fan. If you don't have these two, you have a control issue, which comes from here. That's when you need to diagnose this. Basically, verify, do an ohms test or load test from this point to this point. If that wire is, you know, you know, making good contacts and is it is capable of carrying the um, the load, you know, the voltage load or the ground load through it, then your wire, your circuit is good. It's just you you probably having a problem with this. Now, this can be manipulated also. You can basically take. I don't want to get into that because that that would really jack you up. But if you want to bypass this and um want to make sure the problem is your tip or tip them, you simply uh, you know what I'm saying cut you can get rid of that and and basically try to find a way to ground that and if you get this might stop blowing a little out of whack but um I forgot about pin three pin three is ground so that's pretty much the ground side and pin four is your high speed fan circuit so pin one is your power supply pin two is from your low speed fan pin four is from your high speed fan Pin three is your ground. Do your testing right here. After that, I should let you know what you need to know and uh, you can get your fan diagnosed properly. All right, that's all I got, man. I want to keep this video short, man. Hey, look, comment and subscribe to the channel. I have some more. Um, I'm gonna talk about uh, the ISO relay, man. Typical relay, man. A lot of people don't understand how that relay work. I'm gonna go over some features with you and how you can turn things off and on utilizing a typical ISO relay. ISO is an international standard organization. All right. Thanks for watching. Comment, subscribe, and I'll see you on the next video. All right.